Hang around to the end of the video for your chance to win a hardcover copy of The Whisper Man by Alex North. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are doing uh, another book uh, from my buddy Todd Kiesling. Uh, you, if you have watched, been a member of the channel or uh, watched watch my uh, review of Devil's Creek, you'll know I absolutely love that one. I called it the horror event of the decade. Well, this one I did not love as much. Uh, right off the bat, uh, like I said, Todd is a friend of mine. I consider him a close friend. He's even worked on some of my books, doing formatting, uh, design, that kind of thing. So just telling you all that up front, but this is one of those occasions where I have to be critical of my peers. So uh, today we're talking about The Final Reconciliation. Uh, this one is about, about a band uh, called the Yellow Kings, and I had no idea the Yellow Kings mentioned in uh, Devil's Creek tied into this. I had no idea that's where it, it was from. Uh, I thought that was cool. You know, I'm a Stephen King fanboy, so I love, you know, interconnected worlds, that kind of thing. Uh, with this one, I want to talk about the, the stuff that I didn't like first. Um, the three things that I look for in horror is uh, character, pacing, and dread. The pacing and the dread here on point. That's why I'm going to give it three stars. But the characters are sorely lacking, um, and I'm going to compare this to something else just to get my point across. In Daisy Jones and the Six, a book that I gave five stars to, the character development for the band was off the charts. I felt like each and every person had their own distinct voice, um, and in this one, I didn't get that whatsoever. In fact, I confused one character with two people. Um, I thought there was a keyboardist and a drummer. Um, there was not. There was a keyboardist, or there's a drummer who also played keyboards. Um, that's how lacking I feel that the character development was. Um, because I, I'm a pretty close reader, uh, and I should probably should have caught, because this explained right there on the page. I went back and saw the first time they introduced, that kind of thing. It's there. It's just the, the characters were so forgettable. I was like, okay, so each and every single person has their own, you know, their own thing. You got the guitar player, you got the singer, you have the uh, bass player, then you have the drummer and the keyboardist. I thought it was a five piece. It wasn't a five piece, it was a four piece. Um, so that's my criticism. Uh, there's absolutely nothing here that helps you to get to know these characters before the bad things start to happen. The only thing that we see is their reaction to the bad stuff happening. And that's fine, but I need to know these characters. I need to know something about them to actually feel for them, to actually care about them. Um, but with, with with this one, I didn't get that. Now, if you uh, saw the beginning of the video, this is where I'm going to stop the review for a second, and I'm going to tell you guys, uh, if you want to win a copy of The Whisper Man, give me the time signature that you saw this and uh, email that to me at Edward Lorne, that's L-O-R-N, Edward Lorne, the name of this channel, at gmail.com. Email me the time signature and I will send you a copy of the book. Back to the review. Uh, there's, there's a whole lot of good stuff going on in here. That's why I'm, I'm going to give it three stars. The writing's impeccable. As always, I absolutely love uh, Todd's writing, and this is just as good as anything that he writes. He has a very polished style, uh, that, and from watching his live streams, him writing during NaNoWriMo, I've seen why it's so it's so published. He cleans up as he goes. I do not. Um, uh, we're two completely different writers, uh, and I respect his attention to detail. I respect his writing. Terrific, terrific writing. Um, the Dread. I, you know, you feel like something's going to happen. There's even a little sprint, what I call the, the Stephen King foreshadowing. It's like, uh, you, where he tells you outright something, that something is going to happen to a character. You just don't know how it's going to happen to that character. He does this very early on. Um, like one character, well, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but it has to do with a face. He tells you very early on it's going to happen, and you have to wonder throughout the entire book how that's going to happen to that character. And I thought all the payoffs were terrific. Uh, the final, the ending, great. Um, there's a, there is a twist at the end that was kind of, I mean, it had to, it had to go that way, uh, as far as I'm concerned. The very last bit of the book, I was looking forward to that happening, and it did happen. Um, but a story like this, I feel, has to end that way. Um, the, uh, the 
like the the pacing was also another one this is only what 150 pages in fact i think it's quite a bit shorter because there's some where it's just stuff like this it's just pictures um there's quite a bit of that also uh, probably around 130 pages of actual book here uh but it's it's worth every penny uh for what uh Todd's charging charging for it. I don't know if he has any more of these websites, and I'm not sure if this is still available from Crystal Lake Publishing or not. I'm not sure if it, if it is. I will link to you down there in the doobly doo. Um, yeah, the pacing it it goes by very very quickly, and the book is a lot of fun. I, I, it's a lot of horror fun. You're you're not going to get to a point where you go, I wish something would happen. There's something happening throughout, and we're going back to that dread. It's just a mounting dread as this stuff is happening. You just want to know what's going on. If I had known the characters better, this would be a damn near perfect experience, which is, which is lovely to me because this is one of Todd's earlier books, and I can see the growth from this book to Devil's Creek. The It's an insane growth. There's so much character so much and so many characters in Devil's Creek and they all felt unique and real and flesh and blood and just you know you loved them or hated them whatever in this one I didn't love or hate anybody it's it was just kinda like it was watching a like watching a slasher film one of the early ones that had absolutely no character development whatsoever well I guess most slashers don't um, period but uh yeah th this one felt like that um, it's just a bunch of I guess you want to say red shirts with a cap with one Captain Kirk character. Uh, that's what this book felt like. Um, uh, they, I, I like the structure of the book also. I need to throw that out there. I've always been a fan of structures like this. Um, I did it in my book Bay's End. It's a it, it's it's a circular narrative. I guess no, it's a framing narrative. I'm not sure what it what it's called, but I do like this structure of a book. Um, so, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm going to give this three stars. Uh, have you read The Final Reconciliation by Todd Keesling? If you have, let me know whether or not you loved it or hated it down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, let me know why you loved it or hated it so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!